I truly love PubMed. I've been using it regularly for over 15 years and I'm still learning new ways to search. PubMed itself is a product of the National Library of Medicine and it's a huge database, more than 23 million citations currently and thousands more added each week. You may have heard of Medline. These are the records that PubMed searches. You can also search the Medline records through other sources like EBSCO, but I prefer PubMed. Searching PubMed is completely free. You don't need to be associated with a university or a library to get to PubMed. The problem comes up when you want more than just the abstracts. You may not need to find articles from the 1940s, but PubMed has them if you do. This is going to be my PubMed example search. I'm going to be looking for risk assessment tools, and I'm curious to see if use of those risk assessment tools can reduce the rates of pressure ulcers in hospitalized patients. Even though we can search PubMed for free, we are going to go through the library's PubMed link. If you're off campus, you'll be prompted to log in with your ISU ID and your last name. This version of PubMed is linked to the library's holdings, which means that we'll be able to find a lot more full text than we would if we were searching the free version. PubMed is incredibly powerful, and you have a lot of options for searching it. I'm only going to scratch the surface here, but there are a lot of tutorials if you want to become a PubMed power searcher. Don't ignore these and the PubMed FAQ and help files. They are actually really useful. You can start your search out just by typing in some of the keywords from your particular topic. In this case, again, I'm looking at uh, risk assessment and pressure ulcers, so I'm just going to type in pressure ulcers. One of the things I really like about PubMed is it actually tries to finish your search for you, which is really nice, especially it can give you some additional ideas of things maybe you haven't thought of. There's the one that I want, which is pressure ulcer risk assessment, and then it just searches for it. Okay, so this particular search has over 1,500 articles. I'm so not going to go through all of those. It is good to at least browse through the first page to see what your search found and to see if it is or isn't relevant. If you don't find enough on your first search, take some of your search terms out. I could have focused just on pressure ulcer prevention first and then added the risk assessment later. Again, searching is a process and even I don't get it right on the first time. So let's go through and browse to see if there's anything that's relevant to what I'm looking for. And one of the things that's sort of nice, I can't sometimes I can't decide if it's nice or if it's annoying, that PubMed will highlight uh, your search terms with everything. So you can actually just run through very quickly your searches and it will pull up. So everything that includes your search terms will have a highlight in it. So that it's kind of nice to be able to narrow it down quickly. And looking through my results, I can see that there's quite a few articles on kiddos, but I really want to focus on adults. So I'm going to change that at some point. And the way that PubMed organizes its information is that the most recent articles appear up at the top, but it's not sorted by any sort of level of evidence, so I can find some systematic reviews, I'm sure. PubMed can help you limit to just articles that are towards the top of the evidence pyramid. Plus, they have a lot of other limiters as well. Over on the left side of the screen are what PubMed calls its filters. These are wonderful, better than sliced bread. You first want to focus on the article types. The basics here are shown, which are clinical trials and reviews, but we want to see them all, so click on More. There are a lot of article types, including various types of clinical trials, guidelines, we have meta-analysis, practice guidelines, systematic reviews, and randomized control trials. There's a lot of stuff within the article type that's actually specific to evidence-based information. So I'm going to select randomized control trial and systematic review. This isn't going to search it first, it's just going to show it. In order to narrow it down, you can just click on the systematic review. That went from 1500 to 177. That really narrowed it down. The next filter is the text availability. Don't mess with this if you can help it. You may miss some really good articles if you ask PubMed to only find what's available in full text. We can always try to find the full text later. Publication date is a common limiter, especially for the last five or 10 years. Apply this now if you still have a lot of articles, more than a thousand. If you have less than a thousand, leave it for now. Species 
is usually relevant more in pharmacology and related research. With that, you might need to specify that you're looking for human subjects. But wait, there's more! Click the Show Additional Filters when you want to see more filters. You can limit by language. You can limit by sex if you want to focus on just women or just men. You can focus on subjects, journal categories, and ages. There's a lot here. You won't usually end up using all of these. This is just a good example to see what's out there. So I'm going to limit to English. If you speak more than one language, then you're more than welcome to go through this list and select the languages that you do speak. You can limit to subjects. We already have systematic reviews limited, so we don't need to do it twice. This subject area is really good, especially if you're looking for maybe complementary medicine or toxicology information. That's a great way to limit your search. They also have journal categories. I use this a lot, especially when I'm looking for nursing-specific information. I will limit it to just nursing journals. A caution, though, is sometimes that can over-limit your search and you won't find nearly as much because some of the other journals, even if they're not nursing-specific, still talk about nursing topics. And ages. This is also a really good limiter, especially if you want a specific age group. I want all adults, 19 plus years. But there are additional age limiters. You can have newborn, adolescent, preschool child, school age child, 80 and over. There's a lot of ways to limit your search. So hooray for PubMed limiters. All right, so I have applied systematic reviews, English language, and adults. Now I am down to 50 out of 1,500 with only a few clicks. So that is wonderful. I certainly wasn't going to look all of those through all 1,500, but I would browse through all 50. That's not that many. Okay, now we're going to start looking through our articles again. So I'm looking for something that has something to do with pressure ulcer prevention and risk factors. One of my number one PubMed tricks is to find an article that looks really relevant to my particular search topic, and then I search what subject headings they use. So this is, looks like it's pretty relevant, predicting pressure ulcer risk using the Braden scale. All right, so I'll click on the title to bring up the full record. If there were an abstract, it would appear here. Next, I look over on the right-hand side where it says Related Citations in PubMed. PubMed tries to match the subject headings to these articles. So the more they have in common, the higher up the article will be on this right-hand list. This is a great way to find things you'd otherwise missed. And speaking of subject headings, you can search them as well. Click where it says Publication Types and Mesh Terms. The subject headings in PubMed are called Medical Subject Headings, or MESH for short. This is my absolute favorite PubMed shortcut. Go through the list here and find the subject headings that look the most relevant to your search. The word that's on the other side of the forward slash is a subheading. It makes the search more specific. You can get rid of that once it's up in your search. An asterisk means that this subject is the major focus of the article. And to add the subject headings to your search box, all you need to do is click on it and it will give you three different options. You can search it in PubMed, you can search it in the MeSH database which is looking specifically just at subject headings or you can add it to your search and I'm going to add it to my search and if you scroll, and if you scroll back up to the top you will see that it's up here and it's all in the little MeSH language. You don't have to put anything in quotes or brackets or anything. It's done it for you so that's wonderful. Just a cautionary note if you already have a search term up here or an article title, it's going to add this to what's already up there. So just make sure this particular box is clear before you start adding your subject headings. Okay, so I have my first concept, which is pressure ulcer prevention and control. Now I want to look at risk assessment. Can I click on it and then I come down to add to search? So it is added with the word and and it has risk assessment with the subheading of methods. I'm going to get rid of that methods. Some of the subheadings are just going to be too specific and it's going to narrow my search too much. I'm also going to change where it says M-A-J-R. That means it's going to look for risk assessment as the major focus of the paper. I don't really care if it's the major focus or not, so I'm going to switch it just back to mesh. And you don't have to add the word terms if you don't want to. Okay, so now we have our search where we're looking for pressure ulcer prevention and control and risk assessment. We have gotten rid of the methods part of risk assessment and we have changed 
the bracketed word for major just to mesh, so we can just search a general search. All right, we only have 22. That's not very many, but you can see we still have all of our filters activated. If you wanted to clear them, all you need to do is click Clear All. Now we've gone from 20 up to 448 articles. That's a lot more. And also a very good strategy for expanding your search if it starts to get too narrow is to make sure you clear out your filters and then you can start building them in again one by one. Now you can start saving the articles that you want to keep. PubMed makes this very easy. Just click the box next to the articles that you're interested in. And then you go back up to the top and where it says send to, click on clipboard and then you add your items to the clipboard. It will tell you that the items were added, it tells you a little bit about how long the clipboard keeps things, only eight hours, and you can only have 500 items. I seriously hope you have less than 500 items. If you want to save your searches permanently, you can create a free account with PubMed. I've been using an account for about 10 years and I have yet to find a space limit. All you need to do is go into the sign in to my NCBI and then register for an NCBI account. Again, this is free. Just create a username and password and you can save your searches. Let's jump into our clipboard here. From within the clipboard, you have the option, if you don't want to create an NCBI account, you can either save it to a file or you can email these results to yourself. Now, one of the questions I get from PubMed all the time is how do I find the full text? Because PubMed does not always make it really easy to realize if you actually have the full text or not. So all you need to do is click on the article and you're looking for this Find It at ISU icon. In order to get to the full text, just click on the Find It at ISU link and follow the links until you get to the full text. We have been having some problems with this Find It at ISU link working. So if you have a problem, all you need to do is copy and paste the article title and take it into Google Scholar and that will bring up the full text. Almost always, at least. One last thing about PubMed, they have this really cool page called Clinical Queries, and you can get to it from the homepage of PubMed. This allows you to run a search while PubMed does all the heavy lifting in the background by applying all these algorithms to help you find what you need. The clinical category and systematic review searches are evidence-based, which is great. So all you need to do is run your sample search. So I'll do, let's do postpartum depression. And just like the normal PubMed, it tries to finish your search for you, which is handy, and we'll run it. Under clinical study categories, you can choose what you want, etiology, diagnosis, therapy, prognosis, or clinical prediction guides. I'm gonna stick with therapy. And you can focus either broad or narrow. Broad, of course, is going to have a lot more. Narrow is going to be much more focused. They also automatically search for systematic reviews on your topic, so you don't have to worry about applying any of the limiters. It looks for it for you. Very handy. On the right-hand side, it also has medical genetics. Not something we really need to focus on right now for evidence-based, but nice to know that it's there. This was just a very basic overview of PubMed focusing specifically on how to use PubMed to find evidence-based information. Again, I strongly encourage you to go run through the PubMed tutorials and the PubMed FAQs to learn how to be more of a power searcher in PubMed. If you're going to be in healthcare, you need to be able to search PubMed like a power searcher. And I'm sure over time, you're going to come to love PubMed just as much as I do.